And welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Wednesday, October 3rd. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain. And many of the stories right here can also be found at our website, IndianCountryNews.com. And here are some of those news stories for the day. A federal judge dismissed a tribe's lawsuit this week that blamed beer makers and nearby stores for chronic alcoholism on the impoverished South Dakota reservation saying the case belonged in state court but gave a subtle nod to the tribe's claims. The lawsuit was filed by the Oglala Sioux Tribe, which governs the Pine Ridge Reservation where alcohol is banned. Four beer stores named in the suit sold the equivalent of 4.3 million 12-ounce cans last year even though they're in white clay, a Nebraska town with about a dozen residents on the reservation's border. A federal magistrate has recommended dis dismissing a Mohawk tribal claim in northern New York except for the Hogansburg Triangle, approximately 2,000 acres by the St. Regis Reservation that extends along the Canadian border. The ruling by Magistrate Judge Teresa Willie Danks applies to three suits consolidated in 1991, claims by the St. Regis Mohawk Tribe, Mohawk Council of Aquasasne, and Mohawk Nation Council of Chiefs to more than 12,000 acres in Franklin and St. Lawrence counties and the islands in the St. Lawrence River. The suit claims the land was unlawfully transferred from original reservation land. Danks notes the disagreement between the tribes and defendant state of New York over whether the triangle is mainly populated by Mohawks. Her recommendations will be considered by U.S. District Judge Neil McKern. The Arizona tribe that owns the popular Grand Canyon Skywalk recently received more than $5 million from the federal government settlement and is divided on whether to split the money amongst its members or invested in education and infrastructure. The Wallopy tribe's lawmakers uh, plan to meet this week to decide how to proceed with the money from the U.S. Bureau of Indian Affairs to compensate the tribe for the use of its land. Each of the 2,100 enrolled tribal members could receive about $2,500 apiece if the tribal council chooses to give it directly to them or it's settled by a referendum vote. The amount is about one-fifth of what the census estimates is the yearly per capita income among the 1,090 people living on the reservation. It's unclear how the settlement amount compares to the annual revenue the tribe generates from tourism, leases of slot machines, and other allotments or to other tribes or businesses. A spokesman for the tribe declined to release any of those figures. The South Dakota School of Mines and Technology is hosting a Lakota bow making workshop and presentation for students and the public next week. Rosebud Sioux author and speaker Joseph M. Marshall III will present a workshop titled Life Lesson of the Bow at the School of Mines Surbeck Center Ballroom on October 10th at 4.30 p.m. That event is free and open to the public. The project is funded through the South Dakota Humanities Council. Crow officials have broken ground on a water project that will bring irrigation and clean drinking water to nearly uh, 10,000 people on the Crow Reservation in Montana. The project is the start of an overhaul of the 320-mile reservation irrigation system. The money for the work comes from $461 million the Crow Tribe received as part of the Claim Settlement Act of 2010, which was approved by Congress to settle water rights claims with various tribes across the United States. Alden Big Man Jr., the director of Crow Tribe's Water Resources Office, said uh, construction workers are told construction workers during a groundbreaking last week that the event marks a turning point in Crow history. The workers will begin replacing the head gate on October 4th, increasing capacity and proving safety for maintenance crews. Idaho tribes are getting nearly $1.5 in federal help to boost public safety on the reservations, in particular for women and children. The Nez Perce tribe is getting just over $800,000 for its tribal youth program and its Children's Justice Act Partnership Program. And the Shoshone Bannock tribes near Pocatello will get $680,000 for its Violence Against Women Tribal Governments Program. The cash is coming from the U.S. Department of Justice, part of its programs to enhance reservation law enforcement practices. The Justice Department's Coordinated Tribal Assistance Solicitation has awarded 286 grants, totaling $245 million in 2011 and 2012. The Red Lake Political Education Committee, a non a, a tribal nonprofit and a nonpartisan organization will be hosting a candidate fair 
coming up on October 10th from 5 to 9 p.m. The fair will be held at the Red Lake Ojibwe Seven Clans Casino and Event Center located 20 minutes north of uh, Bemidji, Minnesota on Highway 89. All candidates for local and statewide office, Senate District 2 and Beltrami County, who would represent the Red Lake Reservation, have confirmed Red Lake Nation Reservation alone has over 2,900 registered voters. The event is informal. It begins at 5 p.m. with a half-hour mixer. Chili, fry bread, and beverage at no cost or free will donation will be provided to all attendees. Many people will be tuning into the October 3rd presidential debates between Barack Obama and Mitt Romney to hear what they have to say. Obama is leading Romney in national polls by 3.1% or 49.1 to 46% with 269 of 270 electoral votes needed to win the election. Absentee and in-person early absentee voting is now ongoing in 25 states. In-trade stock market is trading today at 70 dollars and ten cents a share or at a 70.1 percent chance that Obama will be re-elected. And that's going to be another roundup of news from Indian country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to say miigwech for joining with us and come back again soon.